Kapa Matujimer and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at Night. Now news and details. The All Assam Students Union has hit the streets once again after a gap of two years, demanding repeal of the controversial Citizenship Amendment Act. The protest was spearheaded by the Northeast Students' Organization and was carried out across Northeastern states. The anti CA protest first started in Assam in 2019 and continued for over a year till 2020 when the COVID pandemic hit. In all state capital, uh, the constituent organization of NASO, that is Naga Student Federation, All Manipur Students Union, Khasi Students Union, Gadi Students Union, Mijur Jilai Paul, Tripura Student Federation, and all Ornasal Protest Students Union had lost their protest in their respective state capital. In Guwahati, in Assam, the All Assam Students Union had initiated to lose this process as part of the call of NASO. With the Assam government, they have resorted uh, repressive measures. They have not allowed uh, this non-violent movement uh, to be uh, concretized in the state capital. So, the All Assam Students Union and NASO, we are condemning the repressive measure on the part of the Assam government. I do like to warn them that they should stop these repressive measures. Despite of their provocation, we are committed to continue our non-violent, peaceful movement till we achieve the goal. And issues are very clear. We want cars to be repealed. We want the permanent solution of the foreign national problem of the Northeastern region. In Assam, Assam Accords should be implemented. The Hujis and the Al Qaeda's and the fundamentalist group, they should, be, they should be evicted from the soil of Assam and Northeast. The Aspas should be totally withdrawn from the Northeastern region. Sakma Hazong issues of Urnasal protest should be solved permanently. The academic issues of the student community of the Northeastern region should be solved immediately. And the flood and erosion problem of the state of Assam should be solved as a national problem. Joining the rest of the northeastern states, the Naga Students Federation stayed to sit and protest today outside the NSF's office in Kohima in protest against the implementation of the Citizenship Amendment Act in northeastern states. Addressing the gathering, NSF President Ke Kwan Hyun Depp stated that the NESO's charter of demands is to implement the inner line permit across the entire Northeast region, repeal the Armed Forces Special Powers Act and the CA. He said another demand is to implement the SM Accord and to solve the interstate boundary and international border issues immediately. Yes. We Nagas are very emotional people. On 4th of December, the army Javans, the military, because of the military imposition, our brothers were slaughtered. But as Nagas, you know, the issue has been dying away. As Nagas Students Federation, as we, uh, you know, took forward the issue, we are very disheartened and disappointed. Today, not only in the state of Nagaland, but the entire northeastern states, particularly the students' community, feels that ASPA is an evil law. It is a draconian law, and it should be 
completely removed and rebuilt, not only in the state of Nagaland, but in the entire northeastern states. Yes, because of the efforts of various civil society organizations, students' organizations, students' unions, NISU, and other uh, organizations in uh, other states, we have fought to ensure that uh, ASPA is rebuilt in northeastern states. The NSF president also said that another demand is for formulation of a comprehensive policy for economic development of Northeast region, special constitutional status, a separate time zone, and resolution of what is called the refugee problem. Further, the organization also demanded that the government of India look into the issue of people from Myanmar crossing over to the Northeast to escape persecution. The protests also covered issues such as the influx of illegal immigrants, providing constitutional safeguards to indigenous communities and elimination of operations of fundamentalist groups existing in the region. Advisor Technical Education and Elections Madhu Yoka today inaugurated cricket concrete practice pitch at St. Joseph College, Jakama. Speaking at the inaugural program, Yoka congratulated the Nagaland Cricket Association for coming up with the initiative to encourage the cricket players in the society. Madhu challenged the students to upgrade the system and move forward to explore their talents to build for future generations. Madhu encouraged the students to take advantage of the facilities and make best use of the resources that is being provided. The Nagalan Cricket Association for the human initiative and works that you are doing not for your own interest but in having a dream and a vision to give hope and inspirations to our younger generation for our society. It all depicts and reveals the sincerity and the commitment that you have. That you are not doing there. You are not there. Just for the sake of being there for our title for this recognition. Yes, many pioneers and former leaders have taken the call early also. And in fact, it in acknowledging the legal contributions of our former leaders, of our senior citizens, I think it serves the right purpose. Father George Ketol Huangami, Principal SJC, informed that there is no restriction for outside players and everyone is welcome to play and practice cricket. Nagaland Cricket Association Secretary, Huni Loani Lo King said that sports is one sector which brings people together in one platform. He said that cricket is not a new game, but professionally, Nagaland State are still very young, which need to be polished to catch with the rest of the nation. He informed that the installation of the cricket concrete practice pitch that was inaugurated today was funded by the Bro Board of Control Cricket India. And thanks to the able leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister, the immediate former president of the Nagaland Cricket Association, it was under his guidance and under his leadership that the present cricket facility at Nagaland Cricket Stadium, Sovima, is there. He provided with all the necessities, the foundation that he built, we are on it and we are growing from the foundation that he built it. So, uh, as of now, Whatever activities that we undertake, the State Cricket Association undertakes, it's all under the guidance and under the uh, sponsorship of the Board of Control for Cricket in India. Uh, program for the various levels of coaches that the BCCI has. Right now we have about uh, seven, sorry, eight coaches, certified BCCI coaches. So we're sending all the coaches to different districts, affiliated district associations, to, for such uh, programs. Really growing uh, fast in this uh, region of the country, not only Nagaland but the whole northeastern region. And uh, as far as cricket is concerned in the 
country, BCCI, which is the governing body, is one of the richest, and is the richest, I should say, is the richest cricketing body in the world. And on top of that, it's an autonomous organization. So when we are to look at cricket in our place, in the state of Nagaland, the game itself is not new. But professional cricket, it's new to us. Because right now we are competing with the mainland Indian states. After we took over the office, we said we'll take the game to the people. So that the grassroot level, uh, at the grassroot level, the game is being introduced. So slowly, um, that is one aspect that we are trying to develop. One more cricket uh, practice pitch here in Jakama, local ground. So I think uh, it can serve uh, to a lot of cricket lovers, especially uh, in the southern part of the district. And also, um, like I said, we have constructed these practice pitches in all the district headquarters, which were uh, allowed by the district administration. So it's the property uh, of the district citizens and the lovers of the game. The creation of new five more districts, uh, otherwise only 11 districts are affiliated with NCA. Okay. And then uh, we have created and we have constructed such facilities in all the district headquarters mm -hmm. and also subdivisions. Will the regional parties in Meghalaya be the king maker or will they themselves be the king? With barely a few months left for the poll, high volume politicking has begun with several regional political parties actively involved. Cabinet Minister and Hill State People's Democratic Party, Legislator of Maukar Yat, Renekton, Liu Dong, Tongkar has advocated having one strong regional party in the state, even as he hinted that small parties will come to an end by itself if they do not win the elections. Speaking to reporters, Renekton said there are some groups who feel there is a need to strengthen all regional parties, but some leaders feel that to strengthen the regional force, there is need to have only one strong regional party in the state. He said the Regional Democratic Alliance was formed by the UDP and HSPDP, which it, with a clear vision to strengthen a regional force in Meghalaya. Tongkar stated further that candidates win elections based on their charisma and only a few win in the name of the party. Day one that we form RDA, we have a very clear vision that we want to strengthen regional parties in the state of Meghalaya. And I keep repeating myself that uh, we are debating in some group, they feel that to strengthen uh, regional parties, we should strengthen all the regional parties, as many as possible. But to many people, to many groups of leaders, they felt that to strengthen regional parties, we should have only one strong party in the state of Meghalaya. And I am also on that group, understanding that if we really want to strengthen regional party in the state of Meghalaya, we should have only one strong party, strong regional party. Then we will see that strong party, strong regional party will be there in the state of Meghalaya. All party will come to an end of, by itself when they do not win the election. So now we have to throw the ball to the public to understand, to really understand if public really wants to see that they need only one regional party to come up strongly, then we will see that many uh, MLA will come up from one party only. In a major reshuffle in its highest decision-making body, the PJP on Wednesday removed Matya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan and Union Minister Nitin Katkari out of the parliamentary board and included new faces. Former Karnataka Chief Minister B.S. Yadiyu Rappa, Sarbananda Sonowal, K. Lakshman have been included in the parliamentary board. The board, headed by the party's national president, J.P. Nada, will also have Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and Union Minister, Home Minister Amit Shah.
The second Nagaland Olympic and Paralympic Games 2022 football event was kicked off today at Indira Gandhi Stadium, Kohima, with advisor Youth Resources and Sports Engineer Zale Nyeka as the special guest. Advisor to Chief Minister and Secretary General Nagaland Olympic Association, Abu Mehta, unfurled the flag of the Nagaland Olympic Association during the program. Altogether, 4,000 athletes from all the districts of the state will be competing in 11 disciplines which include archery, athletics, badminton, basketball, boxing, football, lawn, tennis, taekwondo, shooting and wusu. In the opening football match played between Dimapur district and Woka district, Dimapur district won the match by scoring six goals while Woka district managed to score one goal. <laughs> Addressing the gathering, Nika said that Nagaland Olympic and Paralympic Games symbolize the unity of athletes coming from every corner of the state to showcase their love for the Games. He added that the goal of the Olympic movement is to contribute in building a peaceful world through sports. He mentioned that football being one of the main attractions of the people of the state is growing beyond imagination and expectations. He encouraged the participants to be a good sportsmanship and give their best and excel without losing confidence and morality. In a viral video, Pastor Carlton van der Berg of Kansas City was caught calling his congregation poor, broke, busted and disgusted because he did not receive an expensive Movado watch that he asked them to buy last year. Let's have a look. You still poor, broke, busted and disgusted because of how you've been honoring me. I'm not worth your McDonald's money. Come on. Come on. I'm not worth your Red Lobster money. I ain't worth your St. John knit. Y'all can't afford it no how. I ain't worth y'all Louis Vuitton. I ain't worth your Prada. I'm not worth your Gucci. Mother, ooh, I'm saying this, and I promise you, Deacon it's not with respect of won't. I'm saying it because I want you to understand just what God is saying. I even found out that Movado, you can buy a Movado watch in Sam's. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And y'all know I asked for one last year. Here it is the whole way in August. I still ain't got it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me kick down the door and talk to my cheap sons and daughters. A Movado watch cost from... $395 to $3,295 was demanded by Pastor Carlton van der Berg of Kansas City. Missouri Pastor berated his poor congregation for not honoring him with a new expensive watch he asked for a year ago, while reportedly delivering a sermon about taking care of God's shepherd. 
Pastor also asked his congregation if he is not worth of their McDonald's and red lobster money. Soon after the viral of this video, Van der Berg has since released an apology video saying the video clip does not reflect my heart or my sentiment towards God's people, yet does not discriminable in the clip. But he did not offer an explanation for his actions. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.